thanks for taking the time to uh, speak with Real Film News. Uh, my first question to you is, um, with Devil's Domain, uh, can you talk a bit about uh, the what, what inspired um, um, the story for that film? Uh, well, I would say uh, the idea actually originally came from uh, Cleopatra uh, Records and Entertainment and uh, Brian Pereira, who uh, had this really cool idea and wanted to uh, raise awareness about, you know, Bulimia. the cyber cyberbullying. Sure. Um, so, you know, I personally, I think it's a terrible thing that these kids are so mean to each other online and, and uh, you know, it's causing suicide and uh, all these bad things and, uh, you know, it's got to stop. So we made the film to, to try to help, you know, the kids from killing themselves all the time. Gotcha, gotcha. And, and with that being said, because, I mean, yeah, it definitely touches on that subject matter of bullying, but it touches on, you know, quite a few other, um, you know, uh, subjects of note that uh, uh, that are, you know, quite the topic, whether it's like bulimia or uh, some of the other uh, uh, issues with uh, cutting and all these other uh, things as well. So with that being said, with, with folks that you've had that have had an opportunity to screen it or or take a look at it, you know, have you had any um, uh, situations where, you know, someone has walked up to you afterwards or walked up to someone who's worked on the film afterwards and, and had, like, you know, a discussion with them about it, about that subject matter? Um, you know, one, one, uh, one girl came up to me after uh, locking it, who was, uh, I guess she was, uh, I won't say who, I guess uh, she was a bulimic who uh, cut herself. And, uh, you know, she said that, you know, she really uh, was affected emotionally. Um, and, uh, you know, was thanking me for, uh, you know, for making the film to, you know, raise awareness and, uh, you know, I told her, I was like, you know, I'm, I'm happy, and, uh, but, you know, but then I told her, I was like, I hope it helps you, you know, stop, you know, being, you know, bulimic or, and, and cutting yourself, it's a terrible thing to do, you know, um, I know a lot of people, uh, do that, um, and, uh, you know, I've known a few personally, uh, you know, people that, that cut themselves and, and bulimic, and, uh, you know, it's got to be, you know, I think they should stop. It's not, it's not healthy, you know? Uh, exactly, exactly. Okay. Uh, well, well. Uh, shifting gears a second, you know, I also had a chance to see King Arthur as well, and uh, I wanted to know, um, before getting involved with, with that project, uh, was there any concern on your part of, of the... Um, how frequently, you know, that story is done and, and trying to, you know, bring something unique to that that story um yeah i mean there's definitely not concern i think you know our script was so out there that you know we really went you know we really were cognizant of the fact uh that that movie has been made a million times so you know we had a robot and uh team guns and you know, magic, and, well, I mean, it was magic with Merlin and, you know, OG versions of it, but we, uh, yeah, I mean, I think, I think we pushed it far enough that, uh, it's not that similar to other ones, but yeah, definitely, you want, you know, you don't want to be making the same movie that other people made, that's, uh, that's just what I can do to Sure, sure. And in and, and doing that as well, uh, my other question to you is, because I, I know in terms of your body of work, you've done um, a lot of thrillers and horror films. So w would you say in terms of your approach that you had to, you know, change the manner in, in which you approach um, uh, a film in doing King Arthur, seeing that it's kind of in a different wheelhouse uh, sort of uh, versus a lot of like maybe the thrillers or horror films that you've done? Yeah, definitely. You know, I always, I always try to, you know, put it, you know, grow and evolve from film to film. You know, you can't do the same style. Uh, that's just, you know, that's basic stuff. So, 
to you got to evolve and um, you know try to you know learn from every experience and uh, get better you know and do do cooler stuff you know if you're if you're doing the same you know set camera setups every time so you know for every you know movie it it, it gets boring you know and then, and then you'll just keep working on that level so uh, for me personally um yeah every film every film i do i always try to make it better than the last film i did okay you know? and yeah. well I was gonna say, was there any like specific instance of that uh, of of you know of all evolving as a filmmaker that you said came in doing uh, King Arthur versus you know other films that you had done? You know what came what comes to mind uh, right off the bat was uh, you know doing work shooting visual effect sequences. Uh, those you know that that that's the learning there's a learning curve right there when you do a movie. Uh, with big visual effects sequences, um, and you know, I did a Landgram with giant robots. This one had uh, we had giant robots, and Landgram also had giant, you know, creatures. Um, but yeah, I mean, you really and and little bit riding. We had a giant wolf, mega wolf. Um, so you, you know, you really got to know how to do that sort of stuff. You know, at least have an understanding of. You know, visual effects and how how the VFX team is gonna, you know, put the creature in and how the actors should react. And I mean, there's a level of uh, interactivity that that you gotta be, uh, you know, savvy to a little bit. Otherwise, uh, you're just not gonna get the covers. You know, you're not gonna get the shots to to stitch it all together and post. Um, so, you know, that was that to me personally is uh, important because you know I I, I, I I love visual effects you know I have mad respect to uh, pass off to Joe Lawson and his crew at the asylum a big shout out to the asylum and Cleopatra uh, Brian Pereira and the asylum and those guys for uh, giving me the opportunity but yeah the VFX man those those guys those guys make it happen I mean it's all the VFX artists I mean they sit there in front of their computer and they make, you know, giant robots, you know, to fire. <laughs> and, uh, you know, they're, they're, they're killing it. They're on fire. So, you know, killing it. Sweet, sweet. So, uh, now lo- looking uh, forward, um, after having the opportunity to do um, uh, King Arthur, uh, do you think that you're going to still stay in, continue to stay in, like, the, the horror um the horror genre or you know now after doing that film do you feel you want to branch out and, and try try your hand at uh other um other genres that you you know haven't uh tackled before yeah no a thousand thousand ten billion thousand percent you know i mean i'm i'm about to do this liner skinner movie and uh you know definitely yeah i'm 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 ready i'm ready to you know to crack through and uh, you know, not be known as horror director, you know, uh, guy. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I've done. I feel like I've, you know, done enough of that sort of stuff to, you know, and I'm ready to ready for the next that right next phase. You know, not be horror guy. You know, I, I, it's like. I've been doing that. You know, I've done it. I've done, I get it. You know, I've done a bunch of horror films, but. I've also done movies for Lifetime, you know, TV movies, you know, two of the, two movies for Lifetime. I had a movie on Showtime, MTV, you know, um, and uh, with this liner Skinner film, ready to crush it with that one, you know, it's a great story, rock and roll, Hall of Fame, Artemis Pyle, original drummer, um, you know, the music, the, the music of Leonard Skinner is, is is what that film is going to be about, and uh, I mean the track that they got that that they they created, Ronnie Van Zandt, I mean legend, legend, music legend. His voice, his songwriting skills, the, 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 the real people involved. I mean those people were just, you know, they changed the game um, internationally. You know, uh, so I'm super excited about that one. 
Cool. Well, Jared, thank you so much for your time. Um, I look forward to um, checking out n any uh, new projects that you have uh, going forward. Thanks so much for having me on. Yeah, anytime.